past fatal heart impact, past painful starts. In fact, I blast tasteful thoughts and past. I back up my actions, fact, don't mask, grab reactions, jack, attack with every word, then act with class as they hear me snap. I got nothing to lose, cause I fought and felt the bruise. Now I'm not the one confused, call the shots and they produce. I ain't lost, I'm finally loose. Pick a new so for excuse. I need the views to boost me to a new abuse of being used. Everybody wants a peace now, y'all can rest in peace now. You're dead to me, so peace out. Remember, you're discreet now. Get ready for Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kiru Show here, and now, whenever we last left off with this series, we had Izuku Todoroki and his brother. Both of these two have tied for first place in the sports festival, getting a double ring out in the final match. All of their power, it, almost brought the arena down in one blow. And everyone was quite proud of his sons. And we do have roughly a week later. Izuku is technically the overall winner with his consecutive 3 out of 3 first places. Todoroki, 1 out of 3. Denki in second place, and then Bakugo in third. Bakugo throwing less of a bitch fit and actually getting more internship requests because he did not lash out or seem like a villain whenever the award ceremony was going on. It was only seen that he had competitive spirit against everyone else. And then there was his fight with Yuraka, where he took her to see Recovery Girl after the match. Now, with that being said, we do have a week later in class. And we do have an actual update on Midoriya. He can see a little bit in front of him. And his vision has partially returned. It is still very, bur very blurry, but he's at least able to make out light now. Now then, with that being said, Aizawa does show off the internship request everyone does have. And there is a particular gap in between our top four of class 1A. As basically 80% of the internship request have gone to all four of these students. Now, a lot of people are seeing that that's not fair. While well, Aizawa is just stating that that's how things are this year. In fact, things are quite spread out. However, this year, it does seem that agencies are just trying to get pro heroes who got top spots in the sports festival. Besides, him going on to state that you have three different prodigies and somebody who has worked hard to try and get where they are. Not everybody understands this analogy. As I was referring to Denki, since she is learning to control not only her own power, but one for all itself. Now, this is whenever All Might would actually burst into the room and ask to speak to Denki privately. This being quite surprising to Class 1A, and Bakugo quite intrigued about this. For a minute, it seems like he's freaking out about something. Wait a minute. Hmm. How old is All Might? He's almost in his 50s. And Denki's 14, 15. Hmm. All Might would have had to have been 25. Her hair is blonde. All Might's quirk might be wind. Wait a minute. No. Bakugo actually somewhat piecing it together. There is a link there between her and All Might. Not only in possible appearance, but with quirks. The way All Might fought before in the past, he always used wind pressure. And then there was her. She flicked air bullets during the sports festival. 
and the way she's moving around. Hmm. I hope I'm not reading too much into this. Now, with that, Baku actually does go through his internship request. And so does everybody else. Todoroki's, well, both Todoroki's already know where they are going. Their fathers. And Ida does pick the same request as in canon. Now, Denki also does actually get informed by All Might that Gran Torino would like to meet her. The entire thing going down where she would learn that this is All Might's former mentor. And watching him freak the fuck out about all this. Her visibly surprised by it and almost shaken. If this guy trained All Might exactly how strong does he have to be? Is she about to go through an all different, all new different form of training that she went through with this man? Oh boy, that's not going to be fun at all. No. But that then there is also Bakugo. Who, let's say, instead of... I would say being with Best Genist, I would say... Hmm. Let's say he just picks a hero he wants. So his internship with Best Genist wouldn't really be any different. Now, with that being said, that part doesn't really matter, but I thought, I thought I should just add that in. Everybody, they do, go out on their internships. And the entire incident at Hosu would go down differently. Briefly summarizing it, the Todorokis would help clear civilians. Denki, let's say, she does not listen instead jumping with Gran Torino and actually trying to help. Since she already does no full cowling, they went on patrol earlier that day, and are actually closer into the city, walking around. Now, the incident with the hero killer would still happen, except it is Denki who does come running in. And there, the, st the hero killer Stain is confused in the alleyway. Whenever the weapon he thrusts upwards into the air and goes to thrust downwards, Amelie just shocks his hand before being pulled out of his pulled out of his grip. As Denki actually just stands there, as the katana flies and she grabs it by its handle, telling the hero killer that he is not doing that today. The hero killer, surprised and shocked, quite literally informing her to get out of here, that he is busy, and she has no business here. Her then telling him that actually she does, as she turns full cowling on to around 30%, let's say 35, and she does rush in. The hero killer, he, would also try and go on the offensive. However, Denki, once she does actually get in close, she's able to fully get a grip on the magnetism around his metal weapons. This being where she's able to lift him in the air and slam him into a wall, before quickly taking him down. Now, with that being said, the hero killer is caught, and Denki is actually given credit for this capture. Since not only did she sustain little to no damage, but... She also did save a fellow student, along with pro heroes coming around and actually seeing her tying up the hero killer with metal rebar. So that whole incident where he gives his speech and encourages villainy does not occur. Now, with that being said, we do have on the bus later on into, well, the series where everyone is heading to the summer camp. Midoriya's vision is still, well, let's say it's gotten better. It's not necessarily perfect, but he can at least see properly. Now, he still is using the seismic sense. However, the extent that he's had to use it has gone down quite a bit. And he actually does have to concentrate on the ability to use it. Since with the presence of his eyesight, his body's response to it, to counter not being able to see, has gone down less and less. 
as they do pull up and take a break. Everybody's stretching and actually talking about how this is actually very nice. Oh yeah, I know what you mean. Feels like forever since we last came out to the woods, huh, bro? Hmm? Oh yeah. Thinking about it now, we never really went camping with Dad. Hmm. I mean, yeah, but there was that one time when we were little. Hmm? You're going to have to be a lot more specific. Oh, you know. Mom convinced him to play with us. And we roasted marshmallows whenever he was wearing his hair costume. <laughs> oh my god. I dropped my marshmallow. These two laughing about it. As Endeavor, he did get annoyed by it. But he did find it funny. Funny enough to actually keep the costume with a stain on it. Now, with that being said, the Wild Wild Pussycats would roll up. And they would introduce themselves. As one immediately would run up to these two. Talking about how she saw their performance in the sports festival. And she has a million billion questions. Especially what it's like being the son of a pro. Hmm? Oh, these two both trying to at least get away from the, well, this pro. I don't remember what her name was. I believe she was the green-haired one. I'm not too sure. But anyways, now. Basically, the same events would happen in canon. Except, whenever Madoi does actually feel a change in the ground underneath him, he blasts upwards into the air. And actually has used his tornado to keep himself airborne. As Todoroki himself is sitting up there with flames coming out from underneath his feet and his hands. As Aizawa does say that they would have a hard time getting something over on those two. Before he does actually tell them to just get down there, activating his quirk as they do fall. Now, with that, they do ask Mr. Aizawa exactly how long does he believe it would take for his students to clear this obstacle. Him going on to state that it would actually be faster than they do think. Hmm? Well, yes. There's that one kid. He has a quirk similar to mine. Hmm. Well, what is it? Now, Aizawa does give the explanation. The kid has total control over the Earth. And we do have down below, with the class 1A. Everybody is already back up on their feet and on the offensive. Karashima, Bakugo, Todorokis, and, well, Denki. All are ready. And they would run into the forest. As Denki, she's jumping in between the tree line. And quickly smashing through big golems. As Izuku, he is actually using a tornado and trying to clear a path for all of them to run through. Todoroki talking about how he's going to try and scout ahead and clear some of the bigger ones up there. If they can find a way through, well, this area, then hopefully they don't find, well, a group of them. Midoriya, or Izuku, telling his bro that that sounds good as Bako is rushing in and blowing away all the golems that he can get his hands on. Now, with that being said, Class 1A actually would arrive sooner than the Wild Wild Pussycats would have expected. And this is when they are told that they will at least be getting ingredients for tonight's dinner. Now, with that being said, they would all begin cooking, splitting up the duties, and at least starting to get along. As we have Bakugo and Ochako, the moment where they are actually talking. Her watching Bakugo as he actually is cutting up some of the vegetables for dinner. As Ochako actually is talking with Bakugo, asking him about how does he know how to do that. And yada yada yada, if they can learn to cook for them themselves. Now, 
With that being said, she actually does apologize, which Boko would at least try and take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Trying to say that, actually, he's sorry. Ochako and a few people in Class 1A actually pausing what they're doing and trying to make sure they just heard that right. Bako telling Ochako that he's trying to calm down a bit. During the internships and the sports festival, that is what the pros he went under have tried to teach him. In fact, once they saw what happened, they at least told me one simple thing. At least now, I can't try to pretend to be the best. And as much as I hate that phrasing, they're right. Hmm? Yeah. What is it? 4 out of 20. I hate that. I should be number one. I should have All Might's place. And a lot of this has made me realize. <sighs> I'm just falling behind. No. They're too far ahead. Now then. With that being said, Ochaku? Yeah. She did not expect that. And everyone does actually begin their training the next day. Midoriya's training, I do want to say, would just be to counter his brother. Midoriya, with one leg, would always be shooting a constant stream of earth in one direction, blasting it up and uprooting the area, along with actually pulling up surrounding mountains and using them for ammunition, along with actually blasting a constant wave of wind in the same way that his brother is blasting fire. Todoroki being told that he has to push himself to the absolute limit just to keep up a constant stream. Him having to use his half and half sides instead of just one single quirk in itself. And this is where his perfect unison, or way his quirk is, would fit in. Now, Denki, I do want to say that she is doing regular strength training. And she actually is running around at a bit higher percentages along with actually just punching through and destroying wood, which will then be stockpiled and used for the next nights everyone will be using for cooking. Now, with that being said, within this time, or time spent at the camp, we actually do have one night, where Midoriya and everyone, they are actually all talking by a campfire. And we do actually have a dare, or truth or dare, where a lot of things are happening, and games are being played. Eventually, Todoroki, he actually does get up and walk away. And then, you actually do spot something else going on. From another area, or out of the corner of Midoriya's eye, he does actually sense something move as he actually just put his foot onto the ground and pressed down slowly, using his seismic sense, as he actually just followed the tracks as to where the person is heading. Hmm. If I remember correctly, that feeling. The way he's just waiting. Hearing the person not only step down, but at least trying to make an outline of what they do look like. As we do have Momo and Todoroki. Midoriya, actually surprised, or at least whenever he does actually go to take a sip of something, let's say his tea, he's just paying attention to the situation with his eyes closed. And the moment that he actually does feel another shift or seismic event get pushed into the ground, it is surprising. I have to make Midoriya spit out his tea as Momo and Todoroki did actually meet up, and, well, a confession took place. Now, with that being said, there is a little while later, let's say roughly five minutes, 
where Todoroki, he actually has to go to sit back down. And he actually does look a bit more confident. And has a small smirk on his face. As you actually do have his brother. Izuku just looking over at his brother and asking him exactly what took him so long. Hmm? Oh, don't worry about it. It's all fine. Hmm? Really? Because you got some lipstick on your lip. Him going to reach up and wipe it away. Everybody at the campfire looking at him do that. Toroki realizing there's nothing there as he just starts laughing along with everyone else there. Now, this did actually somewhat annoy Todoroki, but at the same time it was pretty funny. Now then, with that antic out of the way, we do have the, well, attack that would take place on the camp. Now, with that out of the way, we do have the next day. The villains would begin to attack. And everybody, they are exhausted from training and, well, just having eaten. Along with that, the forest, it is set ablaze. And the orange and yellow flames are quite weird. Now, there is whenever everybody was just trying to play that one game. I don't remember its name. Two people head through the forest and they would try and get scared or be scared by the other class. Now, with that, I do want to say some events would go similarly to canon. Except whenever it's discovered that Koda is missing, Midori and Denki do both head out. Together. Well, Izuku actually to try and inform his brother to try and take care of those flames. Now, Toroki quickly did actually head out, him blasting up into the air and trying to find the source. Now, with that being said, here is what does happen. The events with the moonfish will go similar, or exactly the same. The mustard gas villain, yeah. Momo doesn't play around here. She was, ironically, almost prepared in case an incident like this occurred. She had it prepared in case someone used tear gas, not mustard gas. And, well, with this kid having a quirk, or this being this kid's quirk, she had one simple idea. Shoot the gas mask off of his face. Her creating a rifle and a rubber bullet which she did actually use to hit the kid directly in the gas mask. And not only did she break his, well, jaw with it, she was able to knock it off and make the kid go unconscious, the gas dispersing, as we do have, let's say over with, muscular. Muscular did show up. And there was what was happening. Where Denki, she actually did save Koda, and try to get away. Muscular quickly actually running in and punching her down, as this would break her cell phone, along with actually cause her to try and go up to around 35%, rushing in and trying to throw blows at Muscular. But Midoriya, he actually does try and turn the area underneath Muscular into sand, or quicksand as he would turn it all directly into atoms, before just actually trying to have it come up and grab Muscular, and just trying to pull him down into the earth. Now, this does not work. Muscular using his quirk and quickly just ripping his arms out of the sand, which do try and keep grabbing him over and over again, him just building more muscle fibers, as he's able to actually just jump up, and you do see a giant leg come out of the sand. As, he's beginning to get really annoyed by all this. Sand is in places where it shouldn't be. And it's just pissing him off. Now, with that, he does rush Denki. And she actually does jump up to around 50%, throwing up her hands and trying to block. 
Muska, throwing a punch, as is actually does, sent her flying. Breaking one of her arms as she goes flying backwards in Midoriya, he does throw up his left hand. As he creates a vortex of wind behind her, that actually does scoop her back up. Her being spun around in a tornado. Before she actually try and balance herself out. Now, this actually did break her arm. It being quite apparent whenever a stream of blood actually does begin to flow down it. Midoriya asking her if she's okay. Her just holding on to it, talking about how she'll be okay. But they need to take care of this guy. It sounds stupid, but she needs to try something. Her talking about how she needs to go for another 100%. Hmm? Denki, no. Hmm? But Izuku, it can work. No, I don't think it would. Hmm? What do you mean? I've already tried something. Hmm? Yeah, there was a vortex down there. I, well, don't think it would work. And I haven't tried using this technique before, but... Just don't tell the others I can do this. Hmm? D do what? Izuku bring up his left hand. As he begins to spin it around. As a ball begins to form on Muscular's head. Him just laughing and talking about how he's going to enjoy murdering both of them. Before his laugh, does actually begin to start getting a bit hollow. And Muscular is having trouble breathing. Denki watching Midoriya do this. As eventually, Muscular does drop onto his knees and just try and grab away at his throat. Him bringing his hand up into the air as he finally does at least fall forwards, blacking out. Midoriya finally letting go of his quirk, saying that that should keep him out for a few hours. J jesus what did you just do? Uh, I... ripped the air out of his lungs? Denki horrified by that. That's brutal. Midoriya informing her that that did not kill him. In fact, he has to be very... specific with that ability. Now, she just asked if Midoriya's ever done that before. Him saying no, and he would rather not have everyone else know he can, he can do that either. If they find out, then they might see him as a villain. And he actually doesn't feel too comfortable doing that anyways. Except that guy, well, yeah. The guy reminded him of the Nomu. And he doesn't think that tr that trick will work on the Nomu, at least. Now, we do actually have over with the other Todoroki. Who actually has taken care of the fire villain in the forest. This villain is not Dobby. It is just a random fire villain. Who just so happened to be recruited by the League of Villains. They had one on standby. Now, with that being said, we do actually have Mr. Compress, the odd one out in this variable, who is able to abduct Bakugo Kotsky in their- ow, I just bit my tongue. Who is able to abduct Bakugo Kotsky in this timeline, and is able to get away, along with Toga snagging a blood sample from not only Asui, but Yuraka. Now, there also is that gravity villain and the lizard guy, who are both taken care of whenever Denki comes in with Izuku. And Midori just throws a large gust of wind, blasting the guy away. Now, the League of Villains quickly does retreat, and it isn't made aware that Bakugo is missing until everyone does actually try and go over a head count. And one of the wild wild pussycats cannot sense Bakugo's thoughts in the forest. Now, with that being said, the dorms would then be implemented. And I do believe that this will be a good point to leave this off of. And I do hope you guys enjoyed. Have an amazing night.